Hello there and welcome back to another episode of Cloud with Chris. You're with me, Chris Reddington, and here we talk about all things cloud. Now, thank you for joining today. We are once again here live doing our weekly vlog, as has become the custom on a Sunday evening. So, hope you're all well. Hope you're all doing safe and uh, looking after yourselves. And I uh, hope you've been able to enjoy the last week. If you're in the UK, we've had some easing of restrictions elsewhere. I know that hasn't quite happened, but I hope no matter what you're doing, you are keeping in high spirits and uh, looking after yourself and yours as well. So without further ado, you know the deal. We're going to be running through the Azure blog, the Azure updates, the Azure DevOps blog, the GitHub blog, and then a quick recap of Cloud with Chris. Uh, one quick thing I want to call out with this week is that this coming week is Microsoft Build. So go ahead and make sure you are registered if you are not already. Uh, I am actually going to be presenting at Build on Thursday at 2.30. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and... Uh, see what we've got up our sleeves for that particular session for the UK community, you definitely want to go ahead and sign up for that one. So support is always appreciated. Uh, you'll be joining myself, Dean Bryan, and Carol Rennie Logan for that one as well. So with that, let's go ahead, jump across, and take a look at our share today. So there we go. We are on the Azure blog. And first post we are bringing up here is all about enabling your mission critical workloads with SUSE on Azure. Sign up for SUSEcon. So SUSEcon is coming up very soon. They give a little bit of insight into some of the things they've been doing there to enable uh, mission critical workloads running on Linux. Uh, so again, if you are of that inclination and want to go ahead and you know get in uh, on the SUSE side of things there then uh, there's a conference that you definitely want to be signing up for so go ahead check out that blog post next up then ground processing with space data five times faster with azure every single post that comes out about azure orbital azure space i just find incredibly fascinating and what the team talk about here is a partnership where they've teamed with bull aerospace uh, and they talk about how they've used the cloud to actually accelerate uh, just some of the speeds in terms of what they're working with here with uh, data transfers etc again really fascinating so if you're interested in some of those uh quite literally edge cases there i don't think there's any further frontier you can get to than that one go ahead and uh, check that one out next up then on uh, the 20th of may so a few days ago here uh, there was a post on the azure blog all about a native uh, elastic search capability so or rather native elastic integration i should say here um, so it talks all about this preview release of the Elastic offering on Azure. For anyone who's ever had to go and manage any of the Elastic stack before, you will know that it can be quite uh, difficult in terms of setting it up, managing, and maintaining it. Uh, so there is now a great offering there to have this managed software as a service. Uh, you definitely want to go ahead and check that one out if you are running Elastic at all. So again, another blog post for you to go and review. And I believe this is the last blog post of the week that we're going to be talking about, which is Azure against its 100th compliance offering, protecting data with EU cloud code of conduct. So brilliant to see that there's now been 100 different uh, compliance offerings there that are now in scope with Azure. And uh, they talk about a little bit more detail around what that means with the cloud COC uh effectively there as well so lots of variety there from the blog posts this week next up then in terms of azure updates let's go ahead and uh, have a quick glance through these so first off uh, azure sphere 21.05 will not be released 21.06 is coming in june uh, then the next one we've got is the Azure Key Vault SLA has been raised to 99.99%, uh, which again, for anyone who's depending on Key Vault for management of their secrets or keys or certificates, that is a very welcome uh, improvement or enhancement there. General availability of IoT Hub service API support for Azure AD based access control. Again, I'm loving all of the integration of Azure AD across these different uh, technologies and IoT Hub Service API is the latest addition to that there. So go ahead, check that one out. 
Azure Stream Analytics uh, is now generally available in five new regions. Those are Australia Central, Germany West Central, Norway East, South India and UAE North. Generally available, Azure Health Bot adds new regions and languages for its system checker. WVD Web Client to end support for IE 11 on September the 30th, 2021. Public preview, Azure Percept D Development Kit, May 2105. Software update is available. And finally, general availability, Azure Express Route. Five new peering locations are available. Those are Bogota, Madrid, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, and Toronto too as well. So now over to the Azure DevOps blog. Two updates this week, uh, so quite light in terms of updates this week, but by no means lacking in content, I would say. So the first one is uh, a post from Donovan Brown uh, alongside Jay Gordon. Another of the Azure Fun Bytes episodes. This one is all about demystifying Helm. So I was involved in uh, an open hack this week, coaching one of the teams. was a lot of fun getting them from uh, learning about the kind of foundations of containers, how they work, all the way to uh, the ins and outs of deploying Kubernetes workloads on top of that and some of the considerations to be made when deploying the Kubernetes workloads. So... This is really an addition, I think, to some of the stuff if anyone's tuning in from the open hack this week. Uh, Helm is a way, think of it like a package management tool for Docker or Kubernetes in particular. And uh, it's a nice way for you to be able to go and reuse and redeploy your workloads rather than using the uh, out of the box Kubernetes manifest files. It kind of builds on top of those. So rather than stealing Donovan's thunder, gonna let you go and review that in your own time next up then the uh, roundup of community updates so we have getting the approver for release to an environment with an azure devops multi-stage yaml pipeline static codes and analysis terrascan terraform and azure devops and if you are interested in anything related to scanning, you may want to go ahead and check out the Azure Thames Valley session coming up in June. We'll be talking all about ARM and Chekhov. Going to be an interesting session there. Hosting free websites with serverless backend on Azure Static Web Apps. Use your Azure DevOps System Access token for Docker builds safely. And send Slack notifications via the Invoke REST API at one Azure DevOps tricks number two. So a great variety this week, actually. Normally we see things about Bicep or similar, but quite a variety this week. So an interesting set there. Next up then in terms of updates, uh, we've got a few updates. The first one is about the new README podcast. So uh, you might be aware that we previously talked about the README project. Well, now there is the README pro uh, podcast. And what they're going to be doing is taking a peek behind the curtains there from some of the maintainers of some of the biggest open source projects that are available. So again, if you're interested, that's worth taking a listen to uh, whilst you're going and doing some other things. Uh, the GitHub Artifact, Ex Artifact Exporter open source uh, release has now happened. So uh, the team at GitHub have open sourced some tooling there where if you need to go and uh, let's say export things like your GitHub issues, your GitHub artifacts or whatnot there, uh, there is now a tool available for you to go and use. So commits, milestones, including associated issues, projects, including associated issues, pull requests, including comments and releases. And as of course, as I mentioned, it's open source, so it's going to be available for you to go and add your own issues, your pull requests and improve as well. So great addition there. So with that, let's go ahead and jump across to the Cloud with Chris news this week. We are speeding along this week because I am right in the middle of making dinner this week. So I need to make it quick just with timings and everything. So I apologize for the whistle stop tour. But likewise, if you like this whistle stop tour, let me know because I know sometimes we dwell on a few different topics. So if you prefer this quite quick, fast paced update, let me know and I'll make sure to do more of these in the future. So in terms of content this week, uh, we have been fairly light. Uh, the first was on Monday where I wrote a thank you post because we did, of course, over the last weekend, reach 500 subscribers. We are now sat at 524. So that is really uh, increasing very well. I'm very pleased with the rate and uh, hopefully we'll get a thousand by the end of the year. Uh, 
Uh, then on Wednesday, we had uh, a blog post all about Azure Static Web Apps, the fact that they are generally available. So uh, you would have seen that on the Azure blog recently, I think it was last week or the week before. I've written a blog post with some of my own perspectives around that and uh, why I think Azure Static Web Apps are awesome. Because as you all know, I use uh, static content, but the Azure Storage Static Sites feature uh, for my Cloud with Chris stuff. Uh, but Eventually, I'll move to static web apps, but right now there's no mitigating reason for me uh, because the investments as well I've put on GitHub and everything there, so uh, or rather my own workflows, etc. So, again, uh, really great update there, so go ahead and check that one out. And then on Friday, we had a brilliant, brilliant session again with Isaac Levin. Greatly appreciate you, Isaac, and thank you for coming on to the show once again. Uh, great session, all of our application insights. Uh, had a few hands-on demos there, and we just had a really great discussion about the power of application insights and why we both think it's a brilliant service. And in Isaac's own words, why it's his very favorite Azure service. So uh, I'm not going to spoil that. If you're interested and want to learn more, Go ahead, check out that video. It's not quite updated on the website as yet, but uh, it is available on the YouTube channel, and I will be sure to get that updated either later tonight or tomorrow. So stay tuned for that one. And then coming up this week in terms of episodes, uh, we have got a session with Matt Bradley. We recorded that one last week. A brilliant session, getting some of Matt's perspectives on cloud and the world that he's working in because he's been working with cloud for the last four or five years, helping set up the public cloud division at the company he works for. Uh, so a lot of insights where he's been involved in setting up their capability internally, but also working directly on the front line with customers as well. So that is another one not to be missed at all. And with that then, in terms of blog posts this week, uh, there are going to be two. Uh, I think one was going to be about uh, GitHub Actions and how you can go and actually make your own GitHub Action because the pet project that I mentioned before, Hugo Crossposter, I have now made that a GitHub Action. Uh, so I'm going to be giving my perspective on how easy it was to go and do that, especially with the .NET Core console app, actually. Uh, most of the applications or GitHub apps sorry, GitHub Actions, I should say, that you see are normally uh, kind of JavaScript, TypeScript based. But this one is uh, all .NET Core and uh, using Docker. So that one will be quite fun. And I have got something else planned. I just cannot for the life of me think what it is right now. But you'll have to stay tuned and keep up to date with uh, what's coming out on the website over the next week. And finally, it is going to be a very busy week because on Tuesday, I have a session with DevOps Knots talking all about how GitHub Actions can help in building and deploying a static website and more. So again, uh, a similar session to one that folks may have seen or heard previously, uh, but of course it might be slightly different now with the introduction of static web apps being GA. So I'll give a little bit more of an update on those, but it will still be very focused on the GitHub Actions side of things. So more of the GitHub Actions overview and get people set up for that. And the exciting session that I'm looking forward to this week uh, is going to be uh, the Microsoft Build session coming up. Uh, it's going to be actually on Wednesday. I did say Thursday earlier for some reason, but I meant Wednesday, so apologies for that. Wednesday at 2.30, Wednesday, May the 26th. Tune in where we talk about creating friction-free code across all tools and frameworks. That will be with Dean Bryan, myself, and with Carol Rennie Logan as well. We have a lot of demos in store for you, and we're going to be talking all about our wonderful community here in the UK as well. So lots for people to learn, whether it's technology-based and how there can be some tools and uh, different tips and tricks that can help you in terms of collaborating quickly and easily, but also focusing on our brilliant community that we have here in the UK. So once again, Check that one out Wednesday, the 26th, 2.30 until 3. And with that, that is it for this week. So let's go ahead, jump back and wrap ourselves up here. So there we go. Thank you very much. Whistle stop tour this week. You've just been about 15 minutes or so. So again, appreciate the feedback. If you have liked the very short, sharp session this week, let me know. Hit me up in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter. And I would love to hear your feedback as always. 
And of course, you don't have to be listening right now on YouTube live. It will be available after the fact. It will also be available as a recording when I get around to uploading the file, of course, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and cloudwithchris.com. And on cloudwithchris.com, you can listen along as well as reading the transcript in real time. So if you have liked this episode on YouTube, please go ahead, hit that like button, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know as soon as there is new content. Or, of course, do the same on the platform of choice where you may be consuming your content. And with that, I wish you a very healthy and happy week ahead. Hope there's a great one. Hope that one Monday is not too much of a struggle and Friday is not too far away. So with that, take it easy, folks. Have a great, great remainder of your Sunday or whenever you are listening to this. And see you on the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>